Now, how sad it is for a teacher that his own student is challenging him to a duel. And basically, he had a pride. He now wanted to be now he wanted to be Japan's foremost swordsman. He wanted to defeat his own teacher, and then now I'll be the most famous. Master swordsman in Japan. He was considered the foremost swords swordsman in Japan, and he had many students. And uh, one student, after about 15 years, he was just glowing with pride. He said to him, "You know, you are like my son. I have taught you everything I know, and I'm so proud of you." So after he said that, and the student heard in front of everybody that you know he, the master, really appreciates him, and he thinks. he has taught him everything he knows little by little a certain conceit began coming into him i'm better than everybody else i'm better than everybody else and uh, one day the master corrected him for something and his ego really stood up and said you know how dare you tell me old man who are you to tell me all of this and his teacher is shocked that he's treated him like a son and he's taught him everything and how can he say this so uh, the the argument continues and this uh, student of his gets is so conceited that he challenges his own master to a duel now how sad it is for a teacher that his own student is challenging him to a duel and basically he had a pride he now wanted to be now he wanted to be japan's foremost swordsman he wanted to defeat his own teacher and said now i'll be the most famous so in in those days if someone challenges you then you have to you should you have to accept or you or you accept so all right they agreed two weeks from now uh, they would have a fight to determine who really is the best swordsman and uh, they both preparing and the student had a bit of a doubt the, the old man said he taught me everything but has he really taught me everything maybe he has some trick up his sleeve he hasn't told me he could be a little cunning so he sends a spy to observe how is the old man preparing so his master it turns out in the workshop they're preparing you know the sheath in which in the sword goes the sheath the spy notices there the 12 foot long sheath being prepared 12 foot long sheath normally our sword are 3 feet long Master is going to fight me with a twelve-foot sword. I won't even be able to get close to him. He'll cut me down. He never taught me this trick. He never taught me to fight with a longer sword. Yes, I'm also going to. So he also uh, asks his swords person to make him a fourteen-foot long sword. And my my sword will be even longer than my teacher's sword. So the day comes. They're both standing next to each other, and they have an enormous. The teacher has a twelve-foot long sheath, and he has a fourteen-foot long sheath. And the person says, "Fight." And as the student is trying to take out his long sword from his long sheath the master takes out his 3 foot sword in 1 second and he comes and before the guy can even figure out how to take out his super long sword he's pinned him to the ground with his sword and he's holding his sword to his neck and the student says master you lied you said you taught me everything but you never taught me this trick <laughs> of having <laughs> of having a 3 foot sword in a 12 sheath <laughs> he said He said, "Son, some things are not taught. Some things come from experience. I knew how your brain worked. I knew how you think. I knew your insecurities. So this is something I could never have taught you." And so Whoa. I love that story. And this is relates to what you were talking about. The whole shift from you know data based and experience based and thinking based. I noticed in my own journey how when I came back from being a monk and people began inviting me to teach. they some people ask me questions for which i had no personal reference they talk about divorce they talk about losing a child they talk about cancer i have not been through some of those at least at that time i have not had those experiences and um i noticed that somehow an answer would come that they would find very satisfactory most of the time so then i began to realize we are not limited to our life experience and we are able to i began to see the brain less as a memory drive and more as like in today's world like a wifi like a modem or a wifi system where you can tap into the internet so in the same way to see the brain as what you can tap into the inner net you can tap into infinite inner wisdom and that comes through what you're talking about so the heart is not just a sentimental organ nor is it just a pumping organ it represents the spiritual heart which is a doorway into our deeper being our inner being that's what we mean by a shift from the head to the heart I would say it's head and heart and gut. So gut represents instinct and head represents in- intellect and the heart is the integration of instinct and intellect it's intuition. And that intuition is what awakens wisdom 
And ultimately, it's, we're all here to make a shift from knowledge, which is often borrowed, to wisdom, which is the aliveness of this moment, which is what all of life is in, in a way, in a way, we are life. We, are not, we may think of that I'm having a life, but actually you are life. And when you realize you are life, then all the wisdom of life available instantaneously. You're never in the wrong place. You're never underprepared. You're always in the right place with exactly what you need to deal with that situation. And that's what, that's what comes to me listening to you.